Hi, Dynamic students. This is Dr. Baker with a quick example. It's a two-dimensional kinematics example for Cartesian coordinates looking at submarine navigation. So we talked a little bit in class that submarines can navigate in a number of different ways once they're submersed underneath uh, the surface of the water. They can use dead reckoning. They can use bottom contour navigation. And the one we're going to focus on is this internal navigation based upon accelerometers. And so our problem statement for this problem is that a uh, submarine starts at a position, its initial position here, R0, as a vector is equal to 0, 100 meters with a velocity of V0 vector 6 comma 0. And so that will be in meters per second. So moving with the x component of the velocity, 6 meters per second. Um, and the onboard accelerometers record two different functions. One's going to be the acceleration in the x direction, one's going to be the acceleration in the y direction. So acceleration in the x is equal to 0 0.6 times time. That time, you know, that t is time in seconds. And then acceleration in the y is equal to 1.8 minus 0 0.36 times t, where that t is also time in seconds. And so the question we're asking here is find the position function of the sub as a function of time. All right, so if you think about the relationships between acceleration and then getting into velocity and finally ending up position, we know that if we start at a position, we need to take derivatives, right? A derivative of the position function in order to get to velocity, another derivative in order to get to acceleration. So we're going the opposite direction here. So the opposite direction would be an integral. So we're going to start with each of these functions, take integrals, and then we're going to add in these initial conditions, the initial starting condition of position and the initial velocity condition as the integration constants. Okay, so let's go through that process. So first of all, we can um, say that the integral of ax dt is equal to vx. And so taking an integral of that ax dt, we end up with 0.6t squared divided by 2. Now I'm just going to list this integration constant as c1. Um, so our, and this turns out to be our initial um, velocity. So this is equal to basically v naught x, and that was given as six meters per second. So we could do the same thing for our acceleration in the y direction. The integral of a sub y dt is equal to the v sub y function. And so that one we end up with 1.8 times t minus 0.36 t squared. t squared divided by 2. And then we need to add in, again, an integration constant, so c2. Now, this c2, there was no initial velocity in the y direction. And so this one will work out to be... So I could write those two functions now that v sub x is equal to 0 0.3 t squared plus 6, that's in meters per second, and then v sub y is equal to 1.8 times t minus 0 0.18 times t squared, just dividing out those twos. Now, once again, we can do that last step is to take another integral 
uh, of these velocity functions in order to end up with a position function. So we have the integral of v sub x dt is equal to uh, my r sub x. And so therefore, r sub x is equal to 0 0.3 t cubed divided by 3 plus 6 times t plus c3. Now the c3 is going to be the initial x starting position, and that was given as 0. And so uh, I can do the same integral here for the y. The integral of v sub y dt is equal to 1.8 t squared over 2 minus 0 0.18 t cubed over 3 plus c4. Now the c4, taking a look at what was the initial y position, is 100 meters. And so this here would be 100 meters. And we can write those final functions that r, I'm going to just combine these into one vector equation. So r is equal to 0 0.1 t cubed plus 6 t comma 0 0.9 t squared minus 0 0.06 t cubed plus 100. And so this function, all of the different terms would be in meters. And there would be my vector equation. The first term, the x term times i hat, the second term there times j hat. That concludes this example. Hope that was valuable.